Then we shall, in fact, call this uh, meeting to order for July 2nd, 2024. And in doing so, I'll ask Council Littman to read the spirit. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge our meeting place. The City of Flin Flon Council Chambers is situated on the ancestral lands of Treaty 5 territory. We would like to acknowledge that we also work in partnership with the First Nations in Treaty 6 and 10 territories and the Red River Métis Nation. Thank you. Now we'll have a reading and confirming of minutes with Councillor Slip. Certainly. Be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held June 18, 2024 be adopted as received. Seconder. Councillor Richardson. All in favour? Thank you. That's done. We have a public hearing tonight. Mm -hmm. We have a variance order and um, we just need to ask if anyone is here to speak to it. And. Uh, are you here to speak to a variance order? No. Okay, so we'll take we'll take your question at the end then. Good enough. Is that okay? Is it that way? All right. Yep. So, is it? I do, are you here to speak to the variance order? No, I want the variance. Yeah. She wants a variance. She's, 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 she's in favor. She she's, she's waiting. She wants a property. Okay, no, no. I, well, I don't know. I just want to see yeah. if anybody's speaking. Yeah. So, so if nobody's speaking, we're done with that. Okay. All right, so that we will just move on to resolutions? <laughs> yeah. All right, and to that I'll call Councillor Dallas Funk. Uh, thank you. Uh, check schedule 27-02. Be it resolved that the account in the amount of $622,972.48 be approved for payment. Seconder, Councillor Eagle. All in favor? And that one's done. BL 2024-13, Borrowing Aqua Center Facility, second reading. Be it resolved that the bylaw number 2024-13, being a bylaw of the City of Funflon, to authorize the expenditure and borrowing of money for the design and construction of a new Aqua Center facility, be read a second time and passed on the second reading. Good, I need a seconder. Councillor Richardson, all in favor? And that is passed. We move to 4.3, Council Litwin. I have two resolutions, Your Worship. Bylaw 2024 12, Maintenance and Occupancy, the second reading. It's resolution 27 04. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2024 12, being a bylaw of the City of Flinflon, to establish standards of maintenance and occupancy for property, be read a second time and passed on second reading. And I need a seconder for that, please, Councillor Hanson. All in favor? Thank you. And Councilor Littman again. Yes, bylaw 2024 12, maintenance and occupancy, final reading, resolution 27 05. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2024 12, being a bylaw of the City of Flinflon to establish standards of maintenance and occupancy for property, be done and finally passed. Need a seconder. Councilor Slip, all in favor? Okay, that one's done. And special services, Councilor Richardson. Special Services 2024, which is 27-06, be it resolved that bearing in mind the reduced need for police, fire, and recreation support for properties without any buildings or structures, application for a 2024 special offsetting grant of $684 will be considered by administration provided each landowner may only apply in respect to one vacant lot per primary residency and property taxes for previous years are paid. Okay, we need a seconder. Callis, uh, Councillor Dallas Funk, <coughs> all in favor? Passed. Mm -hmm. Slip over to the other side. And Councillor Hanson, business tax. Be a result of bearing in mind that those business owners who are operating from owner-occupied properties would be duly affected by the special service levy, firstly on the owned business property and secondly, through special service business tax levy. Therefore, an application for a 2024 special service business tax levy offsetting grant of $403.61 will be considered by administration, provided all taxes for previous years have been paid. Okay, I need a seconder. Councillor Litwin, all in favor? And that one's passed. Um, Councillor Eagle. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two resolutions. The first one is resolution 27-08, and this is variation 2024-01, County Dowell, 531 South Hudson Street. 
be it resolved that the application for variation order 2024-01 by Tammy Dowell to vary the requirements for Lot 6, Block 402, Plan 5336, known as 531 South Hudson Street, as follows. From 2.00 meters to 3.28 meters to allow front yard setback to permit construction of a 10 foot by 21 foot deck be approved. Need a seconder, Councillor Hansen. All in favor? That's back. It's building that deck. Yeah, that creeps on that. That's done. There's lots of daylight left tonight. Yeah, okay. yeah I expect to see them. All right, so anim animal. Yes. Yes. It's you. Resolution 27-09, and this is the Animal Control Report for May 2024. Be it resolved, the Animal Control Report for the month of May 2024 be received and filed. Seconder. Councillor Slip. All in favor? Taken care of. And Councillor Slip. Fire Chief. Fire Chief Report May 2024. 27-10 be it resolved that the fire chief report for the month of May 24, May 2024 be received and filed. And I'll just follow up. Oh, I'll get a second before up. you follow yeah, sorry, up. Councillor Richardson, seconder? No. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. You wanted to say something? Uh, is it, we approved it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we haven't. We haven't yeah, voted. Yeah, let's approve it first. Okay, then all in favor. Then it's approved. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, now? just quickly, uh, as you can imagine, I'd like to just quickly go over what the fire department was doing in May. As you can imagine, it was pretty much putting out a wildfire. So uh, it, the, the list is long, but it's all Baker's Narrows wildfire. There are a few structural fires that they took care of, but uh, I would like to commend our fire department for the work they did and all the other fire uh, people and, and uh, uh, first responders during that crisis. Yeah. Absolutely. That is it for business. So on that note, I will move for adjournment. So moved. And now we'll start with we'll start with our press questions, and we'll move on. Okay. I just got a couple quick questions, and Lynn, please excuse me on this again. I'm sorry. The amount for the aqua center. I know you told me, and I I don't remember what that was for, for the loan. What's the amount again? For the total construction loan? Yeah. Seven point. $7,450,000. Okay, well, what are you asking for the loan, though? The loan is $7,450,000. So the actual asset cost would be approximately $16.5 million. Okay, so $7 million is the loan, then. Okay. And I just got another question about this resolution 2706 about the special services here that it says, bearing in mind the reduced need for police, fire, and recreation. Uh, what is, is, can somebody be more specific as to what this is? Okay, so one of the things that we do as a community, um, we have what's called a special tax, a special service levy. And so that is um, a tax that we determine based on the cost of uh, protective services, so fire and police, but police is really just the cost of the building they're in because right. we don't pay for police services, um, snow removal, and recreation support. So that goes on every property in the city of Flint Flint. But if you have a house and you also have the property beside you, but it's not amalgamated as one big piece, it's two separate lots, you're going to get charged that special service levy on that vacant property the same as you do on the one that you have your home on. Okay. So, but if we get a fire call, the fire chief is going to come out, you've got you know, a property on, on that side that's on fire, he's going to deal with it, he's going to put it out. The vacant lot is unlikely to cause us a situation if it, with it, when it comes to like you don't have any structures on there, so there's nothing there that's going to to burn down and be a problem. Um, the vacant lot doesn't have anyone on it that is going to be using recreational services. So what we've done here is we've given people an opportunity to say one of these is a vacant lot. On this vacant lot, we'd like a little bit of um, um, respite from the amount of this special service levy. But what we have not removed is snow removal. Because no matter what happens, whether that lot is vacant or not, we're doing snow removal on that frontage or, or back, depending on back plane snow removal or front street. Okay. And this doesn't end up applying to too many properties within Flint Fawn, right? Actually, there's quite a few 
properties in flip flop. Um, okay. I mean, there's some things that reduce it a bit because, first of all, if you have um, your home on one property and let's say you have three vacant lots, well, you can only apply for one. Mm -hmm. So that helps alleviate it a bit. But there's quite a few properties. So okay. it's just a grant for 684 bucks for people that have a vacant lot beside their house. It's a tax reduction. Okay, a tax reduction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this comes up every year, right? So is there yes. any? Is there any sort of change with as it's presented here than the way it's been presented before? It's not presented any differently, but there is a small difference in cost because the special service levy um, is set for three years, mm -hmm. but every year it is increased by 1%. Okay. And so the, the offsetting grant application is also then increased a tiny little bit. Okay. So then would it be up 1% from what it would have been last year or? What are we looking at for this year's fee? It would be up, yeah. Okay. Essentially, like I think it's maybe like six dollars difference or something like that. Okay. I just have one other question. It was discussed at a couple of council meetings before about that school zone by the zoo that that's not supposed to be a school zone. Has that been straightened out? Uh, Ted hasn't been able to get anything done with that yet, but we have some great people working on it, so I suspect mm -hmm. to see a change in the next two weeks as long as the signs are here. So within the next few weeks, you expect it, because it's not supposed to be a school zone, right? Is that what I, what you worked on it, Jane. I, I did. No, it is not supposed to be a school zone because of the way the whole bylaw is and the way the regulations are. I mean, it's 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 provincial legislation. Right. So we adhere exactly to that provincial legislation with the maps in place and everything else. So it's just a matter of getting the right signage to put up instead. Okay. And, you know, 30 kilometers an hour right now for... 50 feet. Can it get up to 30 feet? <laughs> <laughs> so what type of signage are you looking to get? Like, what's it going to be? Well, I have to ask Ted that. That's okay. not really my, my purview. But, but, but they're on it. And, mm -hmm. and, the, and the sign that's going to be up there is just something that reflects the fact that people will be crossing. Children might be crossing right. all through the year to play in the park, go to the zoo, go down to the school. Playground, you know, that's all it is. But technically, that park, that little piece of Green Street, is not school speed. Okay. It's not reduced. Okay. School speed can reduce something. Fair enough. It'll happen. If I can build off of that one sec, I know in cities, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Regina, um, during the summer months, um, school zones that would otherwise be 30 oftentimes get changed to a 50 speed limit in the neighbor, like if the neighboring area is as well. Um, any chance of that being on the books for Flint Flon? Or no. I see Judy shaking her no. head, so I'm assuming a no. No, it's all year, it's all year long, and we're, we're not putting up any restrictions as far as that, that speed limit goes, except for school zone. And the reason we decided that as a council is because there are kids that cross everywhere anyway, all summer to go play in those playgrounds. It's playground so it, it's it, it, it's a playground zone, but it is a school zone as well. So we left it, and it's not in place just September to June, only certain hours of the day. It's all year round. Nobody needs to be confused. Okay. And just as a matter of interest, the city of Saskatoon has gone to that exact same plan where their school zones are. All year long. Yeah. I was just going to say that I think a number of municipalities across the country have done that. Yeah. One of the best, best playgrounds are the schools. Exactly. Yeah. And many of the schools, actually, if you're talking about education and children, many of these schools in many municipalities and cities have daycares in them. And that's an all year, all right. year thing. So we're being consistent. Nobody has to wonder what time of day it is or what month it is or anything else. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. You have any other questions? Oh, you go right ahead. All right. Um, first off, I wanted to ask about the AMM, uh, AMM meeting that took place, I believe, last week. Um, wanted to check and get a bit of an update on how that went. And I know there was a recommendation the City Council wanted to bring up there. How did that go? Very well. Uh, we had good representation. We had the Minister of uh, Justice here. And so we had some good conversations with him. And we had good conversations with our neighbors from you know, all northern communities. We had representation from all over the north. And, uh, and we did uh, make the resolution, the proposal that was passed, the resolution that you saw and had right here with respect to looking at outlying areas uh, for uh, the government to take some kind of action and to study what it is would be a right kind of thing to create a relationship 
between those areas and the municipality that serves them. Okay. And the plot, the plot that wrote a very similar resolution that was that we decided to combine them because they were almost exactly the same. So uh, it's not just uh, our area; it's across the province. Okay. Um, it was very good. I will say the Minister of Justice got caught up in the oh. grad parade uh, water fight and mm -hmm. somebody from the parade float yelled. He was standing out here yelled, get the guys in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he thought it was hilarious. So uh, he seemed like a very good guy. I mean, standard flin flon procedure. You see somebody out with a suit and tie and you're in the middle of a water fight drenching. Yeah. Um, he didn't get drenched when he got wet. He thought it was hilarious. So yeah. if I can just add to that, we had a meeting with the Minister of Justice and his team okay. uh, before the whole day began for AMM, and that was last Monday, June 24th. And that was also a bit of a follow-up to the meeting that uh, Councillor Dallas Funk and our Mayor had with that Minister this past December. So it was really great to see him here in Flin Flon in person. And he is familiar with Flin Flon from being a very young lad. Mm -hmm. They used to come up here and, and camp and visit. So we did some follow-up and had some really good conversation about what we need here, uh, what we would like to see here, what kind of help we actually need to put that into place, as well as what our court system is lacking uh, and has been lacking over the past probably seven to eight years with the organization that happened under uh, the past government. So. That's what I can say about yeah, that. Yeah, we did talk about this. Yeah, so it's a, a situation, we won't get into that right now, but I did notice an ad for the mm -hmm. Institutional Safety yeah. Officers over at the uh, Health Association. That is fantastic. They're hiring, they are hiring. want to hire a full-time Institutional Safety Officer and a part-time, yes. and that will alleviate a lot of stress on our police. And that, I think, is a result. Um, the position was there, but they weren't actively seeking out um, somebody, but we had had a meeting with Minister Smith, who is a Minister of Homelessness and Addictions, mm -hmm. um, and really had that conversation about the two beds um, that our health region was promised in Flin Flon um, for medical withdrawal, as well as ISO officers. Mm -hmm. So she probably, her team promised to follow up with that, and so I think that's part of that discussion. Um, to go with what Mayor Fontaine had said about who came to the community. Um, I just really want to say who actually came because it's 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 a lot to travel. When we're from Plum Plum, we know how much it is to travel to Winnipeg for everything. So when people choose to come to our community, it's really great. So uh, Grand Rapids came, Thompson came, Nepaga came, Cranberry was here, Snow Lake. Um, ourselves, Lynn Lake. Lake came, um, and also the Deputy Minister of Northern Relations was here as well. Um, so we were really fortunate to have everybody. The room was packed, and it's great to discuss all the Northern and Common and things that we all really need to work on. So I just really wanted to and, see who all came. And what the government really needs to work on. Yes. Part. Yes. Okay. Um, two questions based off of that, um, and. Just to expand a little bit on what Councillor Eagle said about the meeting with the Justice Minister, you mentioned a few things. Um, I was wondering if you could go into a little bit more detail about what exactly was suggested by the city or by councillors or anything else, or even by the Northern Caucus of the Justice Minister specifically for Northern concerns. Like, what were we talking about? Like you said, there's a conversation, but well, I, there, there were some conversations, but most of what we talked about was a follow-up from past December. What was added to that this time, especially, was what our court system needs to clear these dockets more fully, to monitor more closely people in our community who need to do community hours, who need to report to the Justice Committee and can't, maybe can't reach them, people who need to see probation to get through their probation with that support. I mean, if we're talking about community wellness, community health and community safety, that's part of it. And we're missing those people. We used to have those positions right here. We don't anymore. So that was a big part of, uh, of the conversation that we had this time. Um, as Councillor Slick said, look, the, the conversation always revolves around CSOs. What are the blockages to acquiring, educating, and paying for CSOs? Mm -hmm. And for Flin Flon and other communities, it's very hot. It's very, very hot. But we, we need some help with that. 
Uh, I will, sorry. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I, I will say that the justice minister seemed, without saying that yes, we're going to help you, yeah. he did seem a lot more receptive. He wants us to put a plan together how we see the CSO program working in Flint Flint, and we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a lot of hurdles as a municipality to get there, but we need to get there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we need help from the government. And he didn't say no this time. He it didn't say a, yes either. But it was uh, a great open discussion yeah, back and forth, and it, it it was genuine and it was real, and it wasn't just a politician, in my personal opinion, that came up here just to be here and make an appearance. Yeah. Definite conversation, though, um, as everybody knows across Canada, retention of RCMP officers is a struggle for every community. So, uh, Mayor Fontaine and myself have initiated that conversation um, in December, as um, Council Eagle said. So, we fo followed up on that as well about what the retention for the North looks like, similar to what the health regions do. Is there signing bonuses? Is there moving expenses covered? Um, is there housing offset that they can um, offer to have people choose? Because the way it works now when you graduate, you get to choose the province you want to go to, where yeah. before you were assigned to where you were going. So of course, um, our region is going to be far and few between picked. So how can we get people to come here and stay here and be part of our community? So that was a huge conversation. Obviously, between Snow Lake, Cranberry, and Plum Plum, we are short-staffed. Um, and uh, as well as everywhere. Thompson is a, it's a huge issue. Lynn Lake, everywhere. Um, so what can they do um, as a federal government and provincial government to help us um, attract our CMP officers to come here? And to that point, we talked about we as always in every meeting we have with a government official, the uniqueness of our regionality, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. being part of the, you know, Creighton. I pointed out the window and said, Saskatchewan's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, and these people use our mm -hmm. facilities. And uh, it was brought up at one point that, you know, they, they're able to amalgamate Cranberry, Snow Lake, and us. Why can't we amalgamate jurisdictions, mm -hmm. including Creighton? You know, th these are just. I don't know if we can, we probably can't, but mm. we always bring up to these people, whether it's a premier or a minister or a uh, associate minister or whoever, uh, MLA, we live in a very unique area that a lot of people from Saskatchewan use, uses uh, Flint Flon facilities, hospital, uh, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And we need the government to understand that. You can seem responsive to that too, yes. a little more than yeah. sometimes. So, uh, so that's all we get. That is one of our lead conversations almost about well, every time we meet with these people. Mm. Yeah. Also wanted to know too about uh, the AMM Northern Caucus and Councillor Dallas Funk mentioned some of the communities that took part in this um, and maybe more of a point of curiosity than anything else, but what sort of First Nations presence is there with the AMM? Like we're, we're dealing with a, a region of Manitoba where the population's about depending on what count you use, 60 to 75% indigenous population, like, is, is there much of, like, are there bands associated with the AMM? No, no. no. Okay. The difference is, for example, when Grand Rapids comes here, there is a band side to Grand Rapids, and there's a, there's a regular municipal side yeah. to, to okay. Grand Rapids. So several of the community, communities are like that, and that's the part they deal with. But they're not, like, they may have conversations with the indigenous people, but they're not part of the organization. Okay. They're separate from really self-governing, all that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. All, yeah. Grand Rapids all Grand Rapids um, Municipal Council is Indigenous. Okay. And, they were and they're the ones that really explain to us the dynamics of their community that um, there's three communities in one because the Hydro came in and built their little community and then they had the reserve community and then they had Grand Rapids. So there's three separate. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case then, um, is there sort of any sort of communication between the AMM, and I don't know if there's anybody here who can speak on that specifically, but between the AMM Northern Caucus and like a, a regional group like an MKO or something like that that represents Northern First Nations, is there interplay? 
I know in Saskatchewan they do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know that uh, I don't know the extent that they do it in Manitoba. Okay. Eric, you just given me a good idea for a resolution yeah. for about a year from right now yeah. to next yeah. June, and hopefully yeah. we'll be reading some things. That's actually a actual really good idea. Well, it, it's given me inspiration to annoy somebody at AMM tomorrow morning with an email. So I there's that. Yeah, I actually think you should because you're right. I, I think that's a good, good point. I've got something left that maybe advocate with AMM. There's really there is. Yeah. Okay. It's so, I mean, an elected body, right? So yeah. I think, I don't think anybody that's elected is Indigenous. I could be wrong, right? I, I've never asked anybody. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. It's not like anybody's asking somebody to flash a status card. No. You know, that doesn't count. No. No. Yeah. There is definitely I hope Indigenous there is. people elected on, on municipal councils across this whole province. And there yeah. are. But the difference in how governance runs is completely different because reserves are all under federal jurisdiction, right. period. Mm -hmm. So that can, there again, and I think Councillor Lit Litwin would be right to bring something forward that way, it's better to start a dialogue and have something in place to just even invite. Mm. Easterville could come, for example. Grand Rapids already comes. Mm. Uh, anybody from Leaf could come. Leaf Rapids and whatever. Because the dialogue, if you get everybody together, it's always better. Same but that's problems. the difference. No, that's the difference. Same problem. I mean, is, is we all have the same hospitals. It's, that's it's right, that exactly clear, right. That clear wall in who deals with who for governance and where does the funding come from. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, but it doesn't have to be a bar. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Um, Excellent question. Uh, well, don't pump my tires up too much, Councilor no, Slip. I'm not done yet. I got a bad one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> the good ones. You don't get right. good ones. All right, um, also wanted to ask about summer construction projects. I know we're right about that season. Is there anything that the city's got coming up in the next week or two that people ought to be aware of? The work on, on Main Street, we're likely to see something in the next couple of weeks. We're just waiting for parts and pieces for pipes and things. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be probably doing a little bit of, there'll be some demolition work within the next three weeks on 118, 120, and 122 Main. There will be some traffic barriers during that time. Uh, I'm not sure. Have you heard anything about uh, Fair Avenue? You know about dust control? Oh, uh, yes, dust control will be coming up. I believe we're putting out a post okay. on that right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for back lanes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so we got that. So that construction, that's over by the, the old co op towards the dental office, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. All the way to the post office, I think. Yes. All the way to the post office? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Goes from what Main and Fifth to Main and Angel Avenue. Yeah. About there. Okay. And you'll see some signage from uh, Department of Highways as well. Mm -hmm. There'll be some rerouting of uh, larger traffic. Yeah. Detours, I would yeah. assume, down Hatmont Street or down Church. Channing. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, also wanted to check in too about uh, some grants that I saw released over the last week. Um, I believe the city received two, one for a boiler at the Whitney Farm and another one for the Flinty Trail project at the campground. Are saw those, those and... Are they neighbors? Is that the ones that you're talking about? Nope. From, from, well, one's provincial and one's provincial federal, I think. That was from last year. Yeah, so was Flinty. That was, I think, $75,000 for... Oh, the Master Trails grant. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. We um, we were approved for the seventy-five thousand. Um, that will be the Flinty uh, Trail part that will go down into the marshland. Okay. And there'll be an opportunity there for learning about flora and fauna, uh, okay. the birds in that area. Um, there will be a lookout where there will actually be binoculars for so this elementary school mm. and higher grades can come and learn about that type of um, uh, geography. Okay. So what scale of project are we looking at for this? Because I know when the master campground plan was released last year, like, I mean, there, there was a lot of different things in that plan, but one of them was to include potentially a boardwalk through that beaver swamp there in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the area by the campground. Are we talking about that or like, what are we talking about for scale? That's essentially the project. Um, there was a little bit of change in plans okay. just because we weren't 100% sure how that land would work with the a boardwalk there. Um, and so we've gone to the idea of having uh, the trail go down into the, the marshland 
but having the lookout and, and things kind of pinned and attached to the rock as it goes down. Okay. All right, and the other one I believe was for a Whitney form boiler, and uh, that was a significant amount of money. That was somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. Like, is has that been purchased and installed already, and that's a reimbursement, or like, what are we looking at with that in particular? I'm going to suggest with that one that you have a conversation with Kate. I had a feeling that'd be the answer, yeah. but I have to try. <laughs> I'll, I will message her in the morning. Because uh, that would have been, like, if it's for city rec facilities, it'd be here, right? That's right. Uh, one more question. Wanting to know if there's been any sort of update or change with the possibility of an accessible living facility at Willville Park. It's been a little bit since that got brought up. There was a change with the zoning. Anything? No, there's nothing to do or not. Okay. Okay. All right. In that case, Good. that's up for me. Fish, fish, fish.